Okay, guys, my name is David Nunez. Guys, I invite you to watch this episode of Grow TV, where I share my experience of my first time smoking marijuana. Welcome to My First Time, the show about your first time getting high on marijuana. I'm your host, Mike Freeman with Drow TV. Today, I'd like to welcome our guest, David Nunez. How are you? Hey, great, great. Thank you for having me. Thank you for the invitation. Yes, thanks for uh, making some time for us. Uh, uh, 9 p.m. at night, baby. We we make it happen no matter the day or the time. So I love no. it. Yep. Awesome. That's great. Right. And you can find more of David on Instagram, Twitter, YouTube. Uh, he's definitely got a lot going on. So we'll have all the links down in the description below. Uh, so David, uh, please let our audience know where you're located and a little bit about yourself. I'm located in Miami. I live in my, I've been living in Miami for almost 20 years now. Ah. And I'm a director and producer for film, uh, video clips, podcasts. That's my main job right now. Yeah. Excellent. And that's having my job for, 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 for the last good eight, 10 years. Nice. Well, it's a great business to be in. Uh, there's so many uh, apps and technology at our fingertips that uh, the, I guess, creative abilities is endless at this point. So yeah, there, there is no excuses for anybody that want to create to go ahead and start creating because it's just in your hand. Exactly. Hey, absolutely. Yep. Cool. Well, I definitely want to get more into that. Uh, and you as a, a Florida MMJ patient as well. Uh, so I definitely want to talk about uh, how that's affected you and, um, you know, being in Florida, Miami for 20 years. I'm sure you've seen quite a bit. Uh, but the show is my first time, David. So please enlighten us to the first time that you got high on marijuana. Well, the, my first time that I got high on marijuana was like, I think it was in like 2005 or six, something like that. And I didn't get high. I mean, it's the first time that I smoked, I didn't get high. Um, I never smoked in my life anything, like cigarette or, or anything. So I think that what people experience is that the lack of, they don't, we don't know how to inhale. So maybe it's the fear, or whatever, or they, they, I don't recall that very first time, but you know, I was like, I recall I was like kind of shaky and oh, we're doing something because remember I came back, I'm from Venezuela. Okay. So in our countries over there in Latin America, smoking marijuana is not like, it's, it's not for good people. I mean, there is the stigma that, if you smoke marijuana, you are one of the bad guys. Right, right. So it was that very first time I remember it was like kind of underground, like nobody can know about this. Uh, but the first time that I got high was the following week. I remember that was a Saturday, and we were like, it was the same group of people, like four or five uh, friends, and we were like, no, we need to repeat this. We need to get high, and and <laughs> nobody got high. Just the person that brought the marijuana was that he was smoking for, for a long time, and it was amazing, bro. It was amazing. I mean, the experience was great. Obviously, I don't know what was smoking, whatever that people brought. I don't know where they got it from. I don't remember if it was fresh or good or bad or meat or whatever. It was good. It was really good. Um, the general experience. After that, I remember we were laughing, having like a really good time. Uh, but I, then I stopped smoking for, I mean, that, I smoked the first time and it was like month, I don't know, six, eight months when I started smoking again. And then it was like a little bit Saturday in the, at the party. So it was later in life when I started smoking like every single freaking day. Right, right. But, but but I recall that if I can revive that experience, I will do it again. Honestly, because I, I remember it was so amazing. It was like wow. Maybe we forget 
because we smoke every day how good that experience the first time. This was this was in Miami the first time you smoked? This yeah, it was in Miami. Yeah. It was you in remember Miami. where you were? Was it a party or no, it was it was in Doral in my house. The party was at my house, but it wasn't a party. It was like everybody go to the to the backyard and this is not marijuana and have listen to music, have fun, you know. But it was a really good time. Wow. So this is a unique story because you you said roughly the same group of people. The first the first week nobody got high, and then the second week everybody got high. Everybody got high. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That the, because nobody were like a real smoker. So just the person that brought the marijuana was the real pothead. Right. So right. he had fun the 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 first week and the second week for sure. But we were like, okay, nothing happened. But we we knew that it was us. I mean, I always knew it was me that maybe I didn't inhale enough. Maybe you no, know, the fear, the whatever. I don't know. I think it's in your mind too. Uh, that's why we decided well, let's do it again next week. Right, right. And it was fun. I don't regret that. No, that's great. Uh, you still keep in touch with any of those people? Yeah, actually, one of those uh, persons become. Uh, Almost my sister in life, you know. Okay. My my sister from another mother. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We smoke together almost every day. <laughs> nice, great. Hey, yeah. it builds friendships and uh, lifelong relationships. Yeah. If, yeah, yeah. I the experience that I that I've been having in, in inside this industry, okay, it's always been great. It's always about friendship, uh, getting together to have fun, to to have a nice conversation. That has been my experience into in, inside the marijuana industry. Right. Uh, I know not in the professional way. I mean, in the professional way too. But uh, you know, hanging out with friends, making new friends. Just last week, I went to a, to an event and we make. Uh, I meet a lot of new people. We make friends. Everybody got connected. I mean, it was great. I think my experience with, with the community around marijuana is amazing. Yeah, I like to say all shapes and sizes um, come together and share this plant. Uh, yeah. And it really breaks, you know, racial barriers. It breaks all kinds of cultural barriers because if – if I was in another country and I saw somebody or I could smell it, I'm going to go and have a conversation with this person. So it happened to me like four months ago, I went to Colombia and I went to Colombia for a month and I was like, should I take a cartridge with my babe or whatever? And I said, no, 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 no. I don't, I don't want to get in trouble. I don't know how it is. Whatever, whatever, whatever. I went. And I rent an Airbnb right in front of a, a, a place called La Plaza del Hippie. So it's the hipster, I don't know how plaza, it's a, it's, it's a public place where, the hippie park, the hippie okay. park. Uh, and it was amazing, which is like you said, I mean, you literally go downstairs, everybody was smoking and it's not legal to smoke on the street. And, but everybody do, does that. I mean, it's it's a great area over there in, in Colombia. And as soon as I step my foot out of the building, everybody, I mean, it's not like they jump, but just start a conversation, everybody give you a joint. You know how it is. Sure. So even in another country, there's a connection between the people that use this plant. And it's a beautiful connection that you don't see it with alcohol, by the way. Right, sure. You, you went into a fucking fight for a, just for a beer. Yeah, no. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I never see a uh, pothead is fighting over a joint. First of all, I haven't seen it. How you see it? No. If anything, it's like, hey, let's just smoke this together. Why are we fighting? Yeah, right? yeah. yeah, yeah. Um. So in Colombia, is it like uh, do they have like clubs or like uh, special areas where you smoke? People smoke 
in the streets, okay. everywhere. Okay. But it's not legal. It's a gray area right there. Because uh, as far as I understand uh, the, the laws over there, you can have 20 plants, right? You can possess whatever those plants produce, right? But you only can have 20 grams in your pocket. So you say, well, how that works? I have 20 plants. Yeah. <laughs> All right, how I want to transfer the, that material, let's say like that, to another place. So this is a gray area. The law is very, eh, but you, you can do it. You can get away that you can smoke everywhere. So you've been in Miami 20 years. How, yeah. what, have you, what have you seen some of the biggest changes from 20 years ago to today? Uh, just, I mean, I guess probably the same. People walking down the street smoking. I mean, what are some of the biggest things you've seen, uh, especially in Miami? Well, let me tell you something. I, I haven't been involved in the marijuana culture in Miami uh, for the past 18 years. So I, I've been involved in the past two years. And um, especially the last maybe eight, 10 months. Uh, last event that I went, it was an underground event. People were smoking like nothing inside the club and around the club. So actually that for me was surprising. Maybe I don't go to, to those events enough and that surprised me. So I think I'm not the best person to answer that particular question because I, I don't have the right answer. Okay. Hey, everybody. I want to quickly mention Food Forest Abundance. Food Forest Abundance is a great way to create your own self-sustaining food forest and naturally occurring ecosystem that's commonly found in nature but designed specifically for you. Through multiple layers of trees, shrubs, herbs, vines, rhizomes, mushrooms, and perennial vegetables, you can become your own supply chain without the typical maintenance required of a garden. From small spaces to large areas, both urban and suburban, Food Forest Abundance wants us to get back to our roots in nature by engaging with our food production in a meaningful way. For more information, click on the link in the description below and start your journey today. Okay, let's get back to today's episode. Um, well, you're in the city. Do you, do you see people smoking like in Colombia? No, no. Like walking, no. No, I only see that around clubs or, you know, certain areas but it's not like you're i just walk out of my house and i'm gonna see somebody smoking uh frequently no no but do you see the i mean you see people smoking in the car more people than 10 years ago sure do you see more people uh sharing about their consumption of the plant on social media Sure. So I think that the culture is changing for uh, for good. Uh, at, at least here in Miami, especially because of what I said at the beginning, we are from Latin America, like 80% of the population here. And for especially old people, um, it's a drug. It's just a drug. Period. I mean, it's like, it's a drug. People right. that use this is not good people it can't fit in the society in our society right, right because all very all people from latin america think that that way that's the way they think about marijuana at least yeah yeah and uh luckily here in the states uh you have elderly people older people going to dispensaries uh millennials 20 30 40 everybody so you, so you get a nice variety of ages and different types of backgrounds going to these dispensaries and i think that especially in the united states that's helping break up the stigma uh where if you're somebody who smokes you're in this category and now that category's it's not a category anymore it's everybody um uh, as I see that especially with I realized that like six months ago when I started 
I start going to the disco in the morning. For some reason, I start going on, on the mornings. And every time that you go to a disco in the morning, 80% of the people getting in and out of the disco are people in the late 50, 60, 70. So I was like, wow, there is more old pot, pothead that, that now than ever, I think. And they are open about it. I mean, they, I, the other day I, w- I went to a disco around very close to, to my house. And there was this, uh, I think it was husband and wife. And they took a freaking selfie after going, <laughs> after getting out of the depot with the, with the bag, like an uh, influencer. You're like, what? <laughs> <laughs> and that was funny for me. They were so, uh, talking. They were Cuban, by the way. Uh, they had fun. I mean, yeah. I think that it, like, like you say, it's, it's changing for good. Here in America, regardless of what is happening at the federal level, or the federal level, I mean, um, but people are changing, especially all people. Sure. And that's, and that's really good for the industry. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, once the old people say it's okay, then... Bro, those guys go to the pools to vote more than young people. So yeah. if we need somebody here voting in our favor and or favor of the plan is all people right now you are a medical marijuana patient uh yes. do you do you talk about what uh it does for you well yeah the first reason that i got my medical car and i started doing it as a smoking the plan for medical reason was it was because my anxiety. I suffer. I was taking at some point. I want to send you the picture if you want to put it here. Like six different fields for sleeping, for depression, for anxiety. For anxiety it was like two or three, and then I, I think I have one over there that says like up to five times a day, whatever time you need per day, something like that. And I remember seeing that and say, you know what? I want to start getting, uh, or I want to get my medical car, my medical car, and then start smoking marijuana to see if this is going to help it. Because I was smoking weekends just for ha- having fun, uh, you know, no, like for a specific reason. And after my first, I think it was my first or first or second month of smoking marijuana, I, I stopped uh, taking the pills. Wow, that that's this is not this is not a medical advice that worked for me. Okay, so I started sleeping better. My anxiety went for I don't know hundred to twenty, something like that. I'll, and the medical on the medical side, it helped me a lot, way a lot. Oof, yeah, it was it's a blast. What happened to in my in my opinion? what happened to me and uh and i started consuming marijuana for the for uh, yeah for reducing my anxiety yeah wow so you make uh films commercials you produce all kinds of video content yeah that that anxiety must have been affecting your work right yeah i was i was it was so bad at, at some point that that you know when you don't want to get out of the bed you got like i don't want to do this and just start procrastinating everything sure. it was really bad it was affecting my work and it was affecting the creativity around my work that was another really shitty part of what the anxiety causing me and this is causing the opposite because now i, I smoke a freaking i want to say satira but it's, it's not satira whatever um uh, before I start creating videos and I feel like I'm more creative. I can create more. It's more like, it, for me, it's open your mind to creativity. Right. 100%. So it helped me with my health and it's helping me in my job too. How'd you get into uh, making films? That's a good story that I was selling last week. And the people was like, what? Okay, 
the story goes like that. I went to culinary school. I have nothing to do with film. Mm-hmm. Nothing. Right? So I was, because I, I like to cook, right? So I went to culinary school trying to pursue that path of my life. Um, and at some point, I bought a camera to take pictures of the dishes that I was preparing, the food I was preparing. And it failed. I failed. I failed 100%. Three months after that, I sold the camera on eBay. Whatever more. I don't want a camera. I don't understand it. I don't know what is happening. I don't care. Whatever. Six months later, I got a new camera. <laughs> but I, I, I realized, you know what? YouTube is like a little college. You can learn a lot of shit on YouTube. Mm-hmm. So I started watching YouTube videos on how to make a good photo, how to create a good photo, how a composition works, how a camera works. I didn't know. I mean, it was like turn on the camera, automatic, clink, horrible pictures. So I started doing that. And at some point, I started making videos of how to make some dishes. Like everybody was trying to be a foodie influencer eight years ago. And at that point, I said, you know what? I enjoy more the filming part, part, and I, I'm not enjoying the cooking part. And I decide I don't enjoy the cooking part because I'm, I like this better. I like this creating videos, producing. And I start like shooting for other, other people. And then I met the right people and they put me th- into the Latin America production video production, audio production industry and start working with the right people and this and that and one thing take it to the other. It's like a giant snowball. Mm. Yeah. Wow, that's great. So YouTube University, that's what I call it. Uh, yep, YouTube University. Um, so And you don't this- need a federal law for that. I'm sorry? You don't need a federal loan loan for that. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, It's a good thing, too. Um, Yep. And the algorithm is a lot better than uh, what, uh, you know, you go through 12 years of school, you might not learn anything, but you can go on YouTube, you start watching the right videos, they're going to show you the right people. Um, Yeah, yeah. If you want to create, I want to talk in the in the visual art regardless is video audio or or both there is so many good creators on youtube really good that can teach you from scratch how to operate a phone and make a film with your iphone or a a video clip or for a music a music video clip that you will be surprised how much you can learn and how much you can do with the thing that you already have in your phone, in your hand, I mean. Yeah. And in your phone, the camera and some apps and the same. So it's amazing what you can learn on YouTube. It's, it's great. It's yeah. great. It's a necessary evil. At the same time, you know, you say the, you say the wrong thing, they can take away your whole income. But, uh, yeah. you know, the fact that I'm building a garden, everything I know I've, I've learned from YouTube. Really? how to build the garden, what to plant, when to plant. Um, it's amazing. It's amazing. Um, so what do you, what are some of your favorite, uh, things to film and make? What, what's, uh, well, right now is cannabis related, cannabis related videos. If you saw my, my Instagram, I'm shooting, I'm trying to shoot every new reel like more challenging with more a uh, bag story and trying to create something different that other creators and creating right now so that's my thing right now our cannabis i mean outside cannabis i really like to shoot uh, music videos okay music video, yeah and short films too yeah i think short film and music videos nice so nice. Co- commercial science interview eh. Well, there's there's plenty of artists down there in uh, in Miami. You just need to rent yourself a Ferrari, 
and yeah. uh <laughs> yep. the women the women will start coming to the ferrari and then the the rappers will show up once the women are on the ferrari right <laughs> yeah that's how it works <laughs> that's how it works exactly. um So I do. I do want to ask you. Uh, you grew up in Venezuela. Yeah, I grew up in Venezuela. Okay, so I've been to Ecuador. I was fortunate enough to uh, smoke some weed in Ecuador. Um, okay. It seems like a lot of the Central and South American countries they they have a stigma, like you were talking about earlier, towards marijuana. Do you know what that's from and? Uh, why they have the stigma com yeah the, i think the stigma comes from i mean in venezuela from my point of view from what happened around my family and friends or their opinion okay is that usually people that rob you rob the car rob a bank rob the house the, the, you, we know that there is a lot of um social different despair Sure. In in Latin America, so if you live in a not really good neighborhood, then your neighbor can jump and rob you. And the common thing about those people was marijuana. Okay. So they people start associating drugs and putting dr marijuana into the same uh, I don't know in the same container. Let's go say where it goes cocaine and other really bad drugs right um yeah i think it's for for that i think it's that's when where the stigma came from from the people that back in the day was using marijuana was really shitty people right right yeah so when you say uh the social socioeconomic difference so is it the the people that had money, the rich people, they weren't smoking weed in Venezuela? I Well, I found out later in life that it's a, uh, uh, how I call that? In Venezuela, there is, I mean, there is a lot of rich people and a lot of poor people. So, people with uh, college, university with degrees they have an, another mindset, another culture in their mind or they, 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 right now they live a different life they live in a different Venezuela it's a, it's a bubble and they, they live inside a bubble and that inside that bubble marijuana is just like it's for us right. but they, on, the, on the other side of the story on the poor people, they were they feel that marijuana was for bad people. Right. And later in life, I thought, why do they think like that? Well, people with money or a little bit of money travel, read, they have culture, they learn. And at some point, they understand that this comes of marijuana is very different than this one. So that's what I think that is happening in all Latin America. And I got to that conclusion because later in life, I've, I've had, a, I have a really good friends that are, were rich. I mean, they, they, they were born in a, a very rich family and they smoked pot. I was like, what? And they're friends too. Okay, but we, we grew up together. Why they think this and other people think that? And I came out with that conclusion. Hmm. Okay. Interesting. That's my personal opinion. Yeah, yeah, no, that's great. Uh, I I was curious, because um, I would imagine it, it can pretty much grow anywhere down in South America, right? Yeah. Yeah. So it's not Definitely. a matter of, uh, I'm, I'm originally from Massachusetts, but I'm, I'm in Orlando now, but in Massachusetts, you get like two seasons to grow unless you grow inside. But uh, so I, I was just curious because I would imagine down there it could it can grow all year round. So uh, it can grow all year round. But remember Venezuela and this. Uh, I mean, let's take this the best way. We are next to Colombia, and 
everybody knows that Colombia grew marijuana for the last decade, maybe. I don't know how many years. So most of marijuana was imported from Colombia. Okay. And like or traffic. I don't know. Imported yeah, yeah. from yeah, Colombia. Yeah. yeah. So uh I don't recall like I'm trying to recall like the news and whatever, trying to remember if but I don't recall any like farm from oh that we found we had we found I might want to farm and whatever, confiscate. No, I don't recall those news. But I recall uh, news of uh, people getting called bringing marijuana from other countries. Okay. Cool. Well, thanks for uh, that background. Uh, your personal story uh, from Venezuela. Um, but, uh, dude, I uh, appreciate you coming on the show today. Thanks again, David. Uh, let everybody know where they can uh, follow you. Hey, they can follow me at Cannabis305 on my Instagram. Uh, just in that one, because the, and Twitter is just Spanish bullshit politics in Spanish. So follow <laughs> me on my Instagram account. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. And we'll have the links down below. So definitely go give David a follow. And if you're watching this on YouTube, go down there and smash the like button for David. And make sure you subscribe to Dro TV because otherwise you'd miss amazing guests like David and you wouldn't know a little bit of uh, history from Venezuela and South America. So thank you for sharing that as well. Uh, thank you for having me. What you smoking on? What were you smoking there? I was smoking Jokers from Flowery. That is the best strain that, that, that I got right now. Okay. And it's, it's, it's one of my go-to every weekend. Joker from Flowery. Joker. Really good. Well, we end every episode saying smoke them if you got them. So. Okay. And that's it. Thank you for tuning in. Smoke them if you Thank got you, them. Thank you, What's up, Dro TV family? You can now stream the audio version of all these episodes on your favorite podcast player. And if you like more episodes like this, check out this playlist we put together over here for you. And if you haven't already, subscribe to us on YouTube. You don't want to miss more great content from Joe TV. Thank you for tuning in. And as always, smoke them if you got them.